Hello everybody and welcome to the channel, it's Polyester here, and well, it's time for another edition of Is Scream Coming to Dead by Daylight? It seems like I'm doing these annually. In 2017, I had the video debunking the idea that Scream slash Ghostface was coming to Dead by Daylight because there were some, uh, some daily rituals that had been photoshopped to make it look like they fit the character of Ghostface and Sidney Prescott for Scream. And they were admitted Photoshop, so it was fake. So I had put out this video debunking that. And last year, 2018 in August, a year later, I was on the verge of coming out and saying that I felt like Ghostface was coming to Dead by Daylight. I was this close to putting out the video and making myself look like a fool but I was saved by a teaser that was released that wound up being the spirit. But hey, now it's time to look like a fool because <laughs> here I am again in 2019. And I'm going to tell you that I genuinely think there is a very strong chance that a Scream chapter is coming to Dead by Daylight for chapter 12. And I'm going to show you why. So, um, you know that I made this video about working with Lionsgate and uh, what that meant and did that have anything to do with the surprise that we got on um, Monday. It turned out that that was not related. The surprise were these, where did I put it? These um, new cosmetics coming out um, over the next eight weeks. Eight different cosmetics in five different packs starting in roughly two weeks we'll start to see these being sold. This wound up being the surprise. I know a lot of people were like, well, that isn't much of a surprise. They hyped it up. But I genuinely don't think that they hyped it up. If anybody hyped it up, it was me that hyped it up. It just said on the activity forums there was a surprise. They didn't come out on all their social medias saying, well, wait until you see what we've got for you in store on Monday. They didn't generate hype. I was the one who generated hype. We generated hype for ourselves. It just said there was a surprise. And this fits that bill. I completely understand why they did this. Rather than leaving it up to data miners to go through the files and find the cosmetics and leak them, if they leak them themselves, then there's nothing for the data miners and redditors to do. So I am uh, on, on board with this idea that they took control of their own brand and made the announcement of these cosmetics. I look forward to them at any rate. So also another thing that came out... Um, around the time that the surprise and the cosmetics were released, Not Queen let us know that there is going to be a double blood points blood hunt sometime in early May. So we're in the PTB right now where everybody's looking at the Legion changes and the pig changes and the end game collapse. This is going to be on for about a week and then they'll change, um, make any changes they feel necessary from the feedback that they get from the testing. And in two weeks from now, we'll see. Um, the chapter 11 mid chapter patch 2.7.0 go live and then the cosmetics will be sold the next five or six weeks after that leading into chapter 12 so I'm by the way I'm not giving up on uh, all, anything that I said in the last speculation video just because that wasn't the surprise it doesn't mean the other stuff isn't coming or being worked on they're not they can be mutually exclusive uh, a su the surprise and working on licensed cosmetics are mutually ex exclusive things. So I'm not giving up on that stuff. All right, so let's talk about Chapter 12 and why it could be Scream. Is there a really good possibility it could be Scream? Let's dive in a little deeper. So some of you are going to remember from my last video that I touched on the fact that the Scream license is a strange one in that the actual imagery of the cosmetic, the costume, the mask of Ghostface is owned by the mask maker Fun World, while the the Scream movie property is owned by um, Dimension Films, which was uh, part of Miramax and Harvey Weinstein, and that all went into bankruptcy due to Harvey Weinstein being an ultimate scumbag. So they went bankrupt, and now it's owned by Lantern Entertainment. So I don't pretend to know what's involved with all the licensing of this. I do know that it is a real issue that you have to get both of these parties to sign on, which is why when you had the Scream TV show, 
they went with another mask. They didn't actually license the the ghost face mask from Fun World. They just went with the Scream movie property theme, turned it into a TV show, and they did their own mask for that. So um, this fellow here named R.J. Torbert, I believe he's the one who is in charge of the licensing of Ghostface for Fun World. And if you guys remember my video from last year, uh, August 2018, I touched on this fella, R.J. Torbert, and this is why I thought Ghostface was pretty close back then. And nothing, uh, my, my case has only gotten stronger since then. And um, by the way, this all came from you guys. When uh, you were in the comments of my last video, you touched on some stuff that I knew about, but I didn't really connect the dots. And then when somebody made me look at it again, the, uh, the, the penny dropped in my head and I was like, okay, now I see where this is going. Now I see why this is significant. So I'm going to look at a couple of tweets here. We'll go back to April 2018 and we have this fellow here. Robert Scott Bean, who is uh, a, presumably a Ghostface fan, and he wrote to um, R.J. Torbert, like I said, who is the fella who is in charge of licensing Ghostface, and Robert Scott Bean writes in his tweet, I'm playing all these super fun games like Friday the 13th with Jason Voorhees and Dead by Daylight with Freddy Krueger, Michael Myers, Leatherface, etc., and I can't help but wonder where Ghostface is. R.J. Torbert, you need to get him in Dead by Daylight ASAP. Us fans are dying for it. To which R.J. Torbert responded the next day, April 22nd, 2018. We're going to bat last year on this. Uh, with a little laughter emoji. And he says, working on it. Stay tuned. In fact, when ready, I will let you make the initial announcement. How does that sound? Sounds pretty good if you're a fan that R.J. Torbert's saying they're working on something video game-ish and when it's ready, going to make this guy the one who gives the announcement, right? This was the strong evidence that I had last year that I thought Ghostface was close. And I was this close to saying, to going out on the limb and saying Ghostface is the next killer and that spirit teaser saved me from looking like a fool. But again, fool time now. Fool time is here right now. Time to look like the fool. We're doing this. R.J. Torbert, then on April 1st, and I know you're all going to say, wait a minute, April 1st, let's cool our jets here, but I think th this is legit. R.J. Torbert tweets out on April the 1st, on May 28th, the world of RSB, which is this guy, Robert Scott Bean, will be making a major Ghostface announcement, always keep your promises. So... What does this mean? Uh, World of RSB is this Robert Scott Bean person who approached R.J. Torbert and said, we need Ghostface and Dead by Daylight. In turn, R.J. Torbert promised this guy that when there was something announced, he would let him announce it, right? Now we have this tweet here where R.J. Torbert says, there's going to be a major Ghostface announcement on May the 28th and always keep your promises. When I first saw this tweet, uh, always keep your promises, I thought it was related to the TV show <clears throat> and getting the ghost face mask into the MTV TV show. I didn't remember that World of RSB was this fella that he promised that would be the one to make the uh, connect to make the announcement of the video game. I didn't make that connection. So when y'all pointed it out to me in the comments and I looked at it deeper, I'm like, oh yeah, he promised this guy he could make the, the video game announcement. And now he's saying that you need, you know, keep your promises alluding that he's going to keep his promise to this guy to allow him to be the one to make the announcement about Scream coming out in Dead by Daylight. I mean, it could be another video game, possibly, but uh, really, who else is getting it? Like, Dead by Daylight is the big man on campus, let's be real. It could be going to another video game, possibly, but in all likelihood, it seems like Dead by Daylight is the most logical choice for the horror properties of the day to go to. In my opinion, you may have a different opinion. You're certainly entitled to your different opinion. I won't despise you or pity you if you have a different opinion. But anyway, so if you look at the timeline here, this May 28th date seems to line up with around when we would start to see teasers before a next chapter would come out in public test build. Um, when I look at my calendar here, 
Today's April the 23rd. We have the PTB, assuming that we would get the um, the the Chapter 11 mid patch drop live on May the 7th. Then we would be looking at another six weeks until a chapter would drop Chapter 12. This is assuming they're on the same schedule where they're putting out a chapter every 12 weeks. We don't have a roadmap for year four. So this is all uncharted territory. We don't know what to expect. But assuming they're doing what they did before and they're going to have a chapter drop every 12 weeks with mid chapters in between every six weeks, this would put us on schedule for the next chapter to come out May, let's see, uh, one, two, three, June, June the 18th? June the 18th would be when the uh, chapter 12 would drop. Right around the anniversary of the game, honestly. So, PTB would be presumably two weeks before that, which would be at June the 4th. And they're talking about the announcement on May the 28th, which would be one week before that. So, let's say May 28th, we have teasers come in. PTB job drops on June the 4th. That kind of makes sense for a timeline, in my opinion. So... This looks like a really strong case. Um, it's a little ironic that RJ Torbert is saying that, you know, Robert Scott Bean is the one who's going to make the announcement, but it's like he's making the announcement without actually making the announcement. I don't know. Maybe it's something completely different, but it really looks spot on to me that this all signs point to Scream Ghostface coming out in Dead by Daylight. What do you think? So a lot of people think that Legion is already um, Dead by Daylight's version of Ghostface in the, the same way that Trapper is their version of Jason and uh, the Hillbilly is their version of Leatherface before they got Leatherface. Legion is their version of Ghostface, a killer who is played by several different people and runs around stabbing people with a knife. And there is definitely an argument that can be made for that. Does that mean you couldn't have a Ghostface killer in the game as well? I don't think so. I mean, we have Leatherface and um, the Hillbilly in the game. Why couldn't you have two clowns with Clown and Pennywise or two versions of a mass killer played by multiple people, Legion and Ghostface? Um, I don't see why having Legion in the game would preclude you from putting Ghostface into the game. But I would like to obviously see Ghostface power be something very different. What that would be, I don't know. There are a lot of interesting ideas on Reddit, and I'm going to show you a couple of my favorites. I'm not going to go through them all. I'll just show you a couple of my favorites, and we'll talk about them, because ultimately, not, these are all just going to be fan-made ideas. They aren't going to be what the actual powers would be. These are just ideas. It would be up to behavior to decide um, you know, what they were going to do. They're going to have their own version of it, obviously. I don't think anything that you would see on Reddit would be spot on what Dead by Daylight would do. So uh, we'll just go through a couple of interesting ideas, things that they could do, fan-made ideas, and uh, I'll let you just chomp on that, see what you think. Okay, so as I said, I'm going to show you some of the stuff that was on Reddit. Um, not all of it is credited, so I apologize if you're the one who came up with this. It was something that somebody found on Discord. They posted on Reddit. Don't know who came up with it. So this first one is called Ghostface, codenamed The Ringer. Uh, I think the caller would probably be better, but... Their power is called Prank Call. Survivors have been granted phones which cannot be removed or destroyed. The Ringer is able to call a survivor's phone to cause panic. Use the primary power interaction for 5 seconds to call the closest survivor's phone within a 32 meter radius. Start the trial with one available phone call and obtain another call every 80 seconds. While a survivor's phone is ringing, the survivor can wait out the phone call for 45 seconds or perform the hang up action for 5 seconds which will stop the phone ringing, but also reveals their aura and tremendously lowers their field of view while performing that action. The survivor won't be able to sense the terror radius or see the red stain while not in a chase. The survivor will be unable to repair, heal, sabotage, or cleanse without the use of an item. The ringer will furiously attack survivors whose phones are ringing, inflicting the critical state. While a survivor is in critical state, their phone will not ring. They cannot perform fast actions such as vaulting. Any bloodlust obtained from the critical survivor will remain active until a chase begins with a different survivor, and they'll have a 60-second bleed-out timer. 
So most of the variations that I see for Ghostface, who people who came up with power ideas, include a phone power, which I think you know makes sense. It goes along with the uh, the character, right? They're calling you and uh, putting you in a state of fear with the phone. Um, this is just an example of one of those ideas. And then they have these add-ons here, bloody phone and voice changer and kitchen knife. Um, I'm not going to read through this because, you know, it's kind of silly to speculate about add-ons for power that we don't even know for sure if this is what's going to be, it, what it's going to be. I will let you uh, pause the video and read this through if you so choose. The perks that they came up with are stab in the dark. Your enhanced stealth allows you to kill without being caught. The noises made from your attacks and their hearing distance are reduced by 8 meters, including the sounds that survivors make. When you injure a survivor, their status change and aura appearance are delayed to all the other survivors by 12 seconds. You can put a survivor into a dying state. When you put a survivor into a dying state, their scream cannot be heard by other survivors. That's a pretty interesting one, I think, honestly. Um, that it kind of overrides the, the HUD information. I like that. But it's kind of breakable by um, Survive with Friends. I will also say that the other power that people come up with for Ghostface is to disguise themselves as another survivor, which in my mind is never going to work against Survive with Friends. Because if I see, you know, Jake coming up to me and I'm in comms, I'm going to say, okay, Jake, is this you? And they're going to say, are you walking up to me? And they're going to go, no. And then I'm going to know that it's Ghostface. So I don't think the power of disguise is ever going to work in this game. I know people have wanted a doppelganger power for a long time, but I just don't know how they can make it work when comms break it so easily. Uh, anyway, back to this. Um, second power is the heart stopper. Rush of emotions after chasing a survivor causes the air to become silent. When a survivor successfully escapes a chase, your terror radius is reduced to zero meters and your red stain is re removed for 20 seconds or until you begin chasing a survivor again. The effect can only be activated once every 60 seconds. That's a pretty cool one. It's kind of like a tinkerer. Tinkerer is pretty scary in the game. Um, I think that's an, an interesting idea. And then red herring. Who can be trusted? You become obsessed with one survivor. Your obsession will be granted a terror radius that is 12 meters and can only be detected by survivors that aren't the obsession. While a survivor is Within the obsession's terror radius, the obsession will be unable to sense your terror radius, and the perk will light up. The obsession will begin the trial 32 meters or more away from another survivor. Red herring trumps all other offerings. Only one obsession per trial. That's kind of like uh, the the dark devotion one, where you uh, transfer your terror radius when you hit the the survivor with the plagues perk. It's kind of an interesting one. Obviously, like I said, these are just ideas that somebody came up with a concept. Things that could be out there. I think if they did um, put Ghostface into the game, it probably would have some kind of a phone power. That's my personal opinion. And I do like the idea of them being able to sneak up on people and being stealthy. I like those kind of ideas for um, a Ghostface character that they can just appear out of nowhere, sneak up come out of a out of a locker whatever it is sneak up on the survivor uh i like that terror radius breaking stuff like as much as i'll complain about spirit with the prayer beads being able to sneak up on you or michael being able to sneak up on you those are really fun elements of the game i i think we can all agree on that that the spoopy stuff is the stuff that really gets you going especially if you have a lot of hours in this game all right let's move on to who the survivor would be and who would be the identity of um, whoever the ghost face would be? Would it be uh, Billy Loomis or Stu? Or it's been played by so many people. Um, does it even matter to you? Would this be another character where you'd want to see them since they broke the rules with Ash and now we have the plague talking? Would you also want to see Ghostface talking to you and asking you, you if they do incorporate this phone power, you answer the phone and it asks you what's your favorite scary movie? Do you want that in the game? Would that be cool to you? Uh, moving on to Survivor, who would the Survivor be? I think it's got to be Sidney Prescott, doesn't it? Like, uh, I know some of you are like, no, I want it to be Dewey or I want it to be Gale Weathers. But I think Sidney Prescott is the most logical choice for this series. And uh, let's see, there was somebody who made a, I think I actually have a credit for this one. Cybe Wee came up with this uh, Sidney Prescott profile for what her three perks would be 
And we have these here, long gone. Wait, where'd you go? When you recover from the injured or dying state or get saved from the hook, your status change is delayed to the killer by six seconds and the killer will not be notified. When you heal someone or save someone from the hook, their status change is delayed by the killer for four, delayed to the killer by four seconds and the killer will not be notified. I think that's actually a really cool perk that um, if they don't have eyes on the hook, they're not gonna know when you unhooked or um, got up off the ground for a few seconds delay. I think that's actually a very interesting idea for a perk. The second perk here is called No More Games. Your keen senses allow you to know when the killer is aware of your location and you make good use of it. While your aura is visible to the killer, No More Games will light up and activate. While No More Games is active, for more than three seconds, the killer's aura will be revealed to you until No More Games deactivates. It's kind of like a distortion. You have to remember that this was submitted like eight months ago. So this is before Jeff Johansson and um, Distortion even existed. Remember, don't poo-poo on any of these perk ideas because this isn't what the actual characters are going to have. So this is just fan-made chapters that we're going to look at for fun, for possibilities, but obviously some of them are not going to be feasible in today's current game state because you just use Distortion and you would see your Distortion token disappear. I mean, I guess this would go longer than that, but anyway... The third perk here is called Beneficent. You warn others of coming events in an attempt to keep them safe. Auras that are visible to you will also be visible to survivors that are within 8 meters of you. Survivors within 8 meters of you will also get notifications from any detection perks you're running. That's kind of interesting. Anyway, this is the idea here. Um, I like the long gone the best of these three ideas. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't use any of these things, but uh, they are interesting ideas. It's always interesting to see what the, the fan base comes up with concepts. But it's got to be Sydney, right? We need Sydney in our life. So that's what I've got for you today. To me, the evidence is stronger than ever, and the dates kind of coincide and really point to the timeline for when Chapter 12 will come out. RJ Torbert, the licensed uh, director for Fun World and the Ghostface character Mask, seems to indicate that something big is happening in the video game industry is anybody besides dead by daylight getting this character i hope not i want him so let's see what happens thanks for watching everybody have a great day let me know what you think are you excited about ghostface or do you think he's a, go a joke character and you don't want ghostface in your game let me know what you think in the comments thanks as always for watching take care of each other out there in the fog and bye bye